were at a very critical point in the game where um, we were still keeping it somewhat close, and then you have this uh, personal foul penalty yes. on Damn. Jervon Dexter for the leverage, and that turned a field goal into a touchdown and just seemed like we just couldn't overcome that. Do you guys think that that was – the like turning point in the game for the players where it's just like, damn it. Or where do you think at what point did this all go sour? So sour. I think it was the halftime run, the right before halftime uh, rushing touchdown. I really think it was I that, that point as fans, we're all like, well, um, bears could have easily scored. They, they could have been winning after halftime. That was my nail in the coffin. The lever, the leveraging call. What are you going to do with Javon Dexter? He's six, six, three, ten. He's going to be able to go over guys. Guys are going to chop block him. It's going to cause uh, leveraging calls. I, I'm agreeing with you, Paul. That was a huge changing point. But that run took the life out of that team. And you, they panned over to Matt Eberflus. He looked defeated after that. It was that was that was it for me. I think the game was over when they stepped on the field. Um, that too. I, I texted Polly Sunday morning, all Sunday morning and Saturday and Friday, just talking about how I have called this team dead four or five times dead on arrival. And I was wrong every time. And most of the time when I thought something so egregious happened with the coaching and Eberflus fucking up that this team would quit on him and they never did. And for some reason, just in the back of my mind, I just said, this is different this time. For some reason, I feel like this is different. This has to be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. But I just didn't have the balls to say it because they proved me wrong every time. And this time around with just, I think in retrospect, you could have really seen the way that the players were responding in the media and calling him out and talking about it. And I think there's something to be said about the lack of communication and how they respond to adversity where most teams that call each other out, it's almost like on purpose, right? I'm going to call you out. You're going to call me out. We're all going to respond together. This was one of those pathetic, pathetic times where three days it was players calling people out, players calling coaches out. Then they're retracting these statements about how, well, you know, I, I do agree with what I said still, but I just went around it the wrong way. This is professional fucking football. It's a sport where guys bash each other's brains in. I don't give a shit about how you say it. Say the thing that needs to be said. And that's kind of where this uh, this week started, where I just thought it was the beginning of the end. I was I wish I was braver to say, you know, how obvious it was. Um, but it's just painfully obvious at this point. And, and I am 98% sure that Matt Eberflus will ride out till the end of the season. And I'm also 99.99% sure that it's the wrong choice. I think the best thing, the only logical thing to do, regardless of who takes over, because I'd rather watch the dumpster fire with Shane Waldron as the head coach, Eric, uh, Eric Washington as the interim head coach, anything would be better than this. And, um, and I just know it's not going to happen because of the same reasons we just kind of went over in the last part. It was, I think the game was over. The moment they stepped on the field, I think this team is just done with it. Um, and it's only going to get worse from here because you can even tell in Eberflus's comments towards the end of the end of the week leading up into the game where now all of a sudden Eberflus is singing a different tune. Now everything is my fault. It only took you four years to realize that stop blaming your fucking players when you give them loafs and <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like you're actually giving yeah. them fucking little tickets about – it's like a it's like a kindergarten classroom. Like here's your ticket for fucking up, but I never I never make the mistake. And then all of a sudden, everybody tells him you're a fucking asshole. You fucked up, but you don't say it. And now all of a sudden, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he's going. You know, I should have done that differently. Yeah, you should have been saying that four years ago, asshole. And not only four <laughs> years ago, I, you know, I told David as a head coach coming into this, like you've been in football your whole life, right? Whether you're, you've played, whether you've been an assistant coach or whatever, you've experienced so much situational football that all these situations should not be too big for you. And yet it seems like when Matt Eberflus is in the moment, these situations are too big for him. It seems like he's getting lost and then he's coming back with like, OK, well, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that for me to give you. Uh, an answer honestly in this and that we're like I'll, I'll tell you with like Tyreek Stevenson benching you have a guy like Mike Singletary and I'm not saying Mike Singletary achieved much as a head coach in this league right but as, but 
I believe he was a real coach because after the Vernon Davis game, he came out in the press conference and said, I don't want him. I, we can't win with him. Right away, you go out there and, and you make that statement. It doesn't take you till Wednesday or Thursday to be like, yeah, okay, I guess. I hear what you're saying and this and that. And so to me, it's just, I think Eberflus is just incapable of ha having those moments, you know, not be too big for him. And, uh, I, I, dude, I don't uh, – to me, it was damning during the Washington game where after Caleb brought the team back 26 seconds ago, he goes, sits on the bench, doesn't expect to play another down unless it goes into overtime. Finally, he's able to take a breath. What does he have to do? Get up and pull his coach off the field. When's the last <laughs> time you've seen Andy Reed waddle onto the field? Like these guys are well aware of what their job is and what their duties are. And they don't get lost in the moment like that. And to me, that's really damning about Matt Eberflus. I, I agree that Matt Eberflus. So I know I'm, we're talking about the game now. And I, I just want to hit on a few things with the Arizona game is the Cardinals are a good team. No doubt about it. They're a young team. They do have a young head coach. It's their, his first year. And the Cardinals have had the hardest schedule in football. The first, you know, eight games, they were four and four through that time. They came in and showed, hey, Arizona is a pretty decent ball club in their house, too. So I got to you got to give hats off to them. I'm not saying either that we should have dominated the Cardinals, but we should have won that game. The Bears have a better defense. They have a better offensive roster, but they don't have a better offensive line. And we truly saw that against one of the worst pass rushes in football. So the Cardinals were not a cakewalk. And I knew walking into this game, everyone was like, oh, we got this. We're going to win the next two games, and we're going to enter Green Bay with the same record as them. I, I was like, I don't know. Like, Obviously, I'm going to say the Bears are going to win every single time. You know that graphic of Mike Ditka when it's all Packers chosen, and he's the one choosing the Bears? That's going to be me every single day and twice on Sunday. But this Bears, I knew that this walking in this game, I was like, this is not going to be good, if, especially if the Bears walk in overconfident. Also missing Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon. Then you lot were missing Braxton Jones. You're missing your key players right there. Andrew Billings gets hurt. Now Darnell Wright has an MCL sprain. Just it's the Bears are in an ugly position right now. And with the game, I think they were underprepared. They did a great job holding Marvin Harrison, though. That was a big positive on the day. Only three catches. Not, not a bad job there. But Kyler Murray was able to do whatever he wanted. They had the rush attack going. James Conner was running all over us. And, you know, I got I to gotta take a little shot here at my guy, Javon Dexter. First four games, four sacks. He was doing a fantastic job. He's been non-existent since. That was the first time I heard his name on that leveraging call. And then the pre-snap penalties, too, that killed this team. Chris Morgan, as the offensive line coach, didn't come in with a good plan. Shane Waldron just looked defeated. Him and Caleb sitting on the sideline like two kids at dinner with parents nowadays with two iPads, not even talking to each other or looking at each other. Just not a good overall situation for the Bears in the Cardinals game. Cairo Santos, shout out to him for getting us our only points. Tory Taylor did a great job. Roma Dunze did a great job. But three guys doesn't win you a ball game. You know what I mean? And the game plan against Arizona was just horrendous for the Chicago well, Bears, especially for Shane Waldron. And, and Nick, when I mentioned this, real sorry. quick, when I mentioned moments that are too big for the head coach, uh, I think in this game you could point to the very end of the game, where why would you still have Caleb Williams out there? I, I think any mind. anybody sitting on their couch, we don't pretend to be experts, but like this, that's obvious. How do you not? put in Tyson Bajan out there. What, what did you guys see though at halftime Tyson Bajan had his helmet on was stretching his legs and throwing. So they were like, you could go in at any moment. So maybe this Caleb injury was happening a little bit sooner. I don't think maybe people saw that, mm -hmm. but I was like, watch Tyson Bajan. And during the stream, they zoomed in on Flus, and you see Bajan throw his helmet on. And then when they zoomed out on the kickoff, Bajan's jumping up and down, staying loose, getting ready to go. And when Caleb, Caleb usually jogs out on the field, he walked out on the field. I was, I honestly was like, okay, I think Tyson Bajan might be going in. Something's going on here. Caleb could have an injury we don't know about. And we finally saw it after getting sacked two times in the last two games. But Paul, I could not agree more. Why is your number one overall pick when you're down 20 out there? You are not winning this game. Throw Tyson out there and see what he can do, even if you lose that game. My thing with that is, yes, um, it was sloppy. And at the end of the day, yes, there's lots of injuries, Braxton Jones, Kyler Gordon, all that stuff. But honestly, Nick, question, like with that 
performance. Even with those injuries, you're not that bad of a team. I said to Paulie pre-show, who do you beat in the NFL with that type of preparedness and performance from last week or from yesterday? Like the Bears. I don't know if the Bears beat the Panthers. I don't know if the Bears beat the Saints. I don't know if the Bears beat the Giants or the Patriots with that level of performance last week. I don't think it's going to get much better moving up into the Patriots, but you're saying like, yes, the Cardinals are good and they're well coached. I agree with you. I think they're underrated. I think they're better. I think uh, Shane Steichen's pretty good, but that performance was so borderline sabotage, just borderline, not team, a team that did not care to be there. And to me, I, I can't name a team that the bears would have beaten on that, on that day. The, I'll go back to the Commanders game. The Commanders game, very similar game. If you look at the stats, you look how everyone played. The defense obviously played a, a lot better, but you're playing an injured Jaden Daniels. You're playing a healthy Kyler Murray. Imagine if Jaden Daniels was healthy. I think that you honestly, would we would have gotten crushed by the Commanders at that point. I The Hail Mary obviously took a lot of life out of this team, and I think what the team needs to do is I would like to see a team, a players only meeting. Talk about what you guys want out of your coaches and then go back to your coaches. You have these leadership committees on the defense, offense, and special teams. You go talk to Shane Waldron. You go talk to Eric Washington and Matty Eberflus and you talk to Richard Hightower and you'd be like, guys, this is what we're doing. I don't think special teams has anything to say, but you know, when Caleb comes out and says, you know, Tori Taylor, you're going to be kicking a lot less. That's not a good message because he's been kicking a ton, but he's been doing a great job. He grew, uh, anyone that says he wasn't worth the fourth round pick, I think is still crazy. No, but last week, I really think the only team that you would have beat in the NFL, maybe, maybe was, is the New England Patriots who we That's ironically it. play. Yeah. But, it, but it's, and no we're not even ball. favored by that much. And against you the know, Patriots. I, I think I, it's going to be bad. I think we're at a point now where I can't feel very comfortable about predicting any kind of a victory because I think we're more leaning on these teams beating themselves. You look at week one against the Titans, and that's a great example of a team beating themselves. You know, if Will Levis doesn't throw that pick six, we lose that game, right? So uh, I think Bill Parcells said it more, um, more games are lost in the NFL that are won which is a, f a funny quote, but it's very true because I, it's so it sucks because my whole philosophy about football is I would love to dominate by design. I don't see the chiefs going into any week, hoping they're going to win. No, they're, they're expecting to win because yep. they're that damn good. And so that's what I want out of my football team. And I think we're at the exact opposite right now where we're just hoping these teams implode and we can maybe take advantage of it in order to sneak out a victory, which is not a good place to be.